So my friend Kevin, he, I had called him, and I was like, Kev, they're gonna build a statue of me, and they're gonna put it up at Wukasan. One, I couldn't believe it. Two, you know, I felt like, man, I can't believe that somebody would think about me in this manner. He was like, what? He was like, they don't build a statue of you. He said, they don't even have a statue of Yao. You're black. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you're black. I was like, I was cracking up laughing. Anything is possible, huh? Man. With the fourth pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select Stephon Marbury. 20 long years. You ready for this day? Oh, he knocked it down! Marbury, 4-3, ring it up! Step for three, and it's pure! Before becoming an iconic figure in China, Stephon Marbury was a marvel to watch in the NBA. Drafted in 1996, the Coney Island native was dynamic. Here's Marbury on the drive. Oh! The two-time All-Star averaged nearly 20 points per game while playing for five teams. Basketball has always been my first love. I love when the ball goes in. I love the cheers. I love everything about it. I mean, it's fun. I mean, it's fun winning. In 2008, Marbury was in his fourth season with his hometown New York Knicks as tensions grew between him and the organization. My toughest time probably was when I was playing in New York. So much turmoil was going on. Mike D'Antoni had chose to bring in Chris Duhon and he said that he was going in another direction. I was told that I was going to have an opportunity to play I worked extremely hard throughout that time. And the first game that we were playing, you know, I was sitting on the bench. Mike D'Antoni is sending a clear message, and it doesn't look like Marbury is going to be in the rotation. It hurt more because of the way how it was done. We were winning by a lot of points. He still didn't put me in the game, and the fans started chanting. <laughs> I was sitting at the end of the bench. And I was like, wow, this is really the end. By me leaving New York, I knew that that was going to be a difficult challenge because that was pretty much my base and my home. That was the beginning of the end. He would be out of the NBA by 2009 and battling his own personal demons. I was going through a lot and it was time for a new change. You know, I had played in the NBA for over 13 years, and um, I just felt like there wasn't anything else there for me. During this time, I was pretty much in a depressed state. I had lost the coach that taught all of my brothers and myself how to play basketball one week. Then I lost my aunt the second week. Two weeks later, my father died. It was pretty much like isolation. All of what I've done and what I've, what I've given to the game, um, at that time I felt that um, I didn't have a support system that I needed in order for me to get back on my feet. I was in a dark place where I was not feeling like myself. I was laying in the bed and my wife, she was just like, you gotta get up, you gotta go do something. And that's when I started to get my mind right and Jen, she reached out to me. In January of 2010, Marbury signed with the Shanji Dragons of the Chinese Basketball Association. My family is in New York City. Of course, my children, it was a little difficult for them, but I explained to them and they understood. 
I knew that this was something that would be able to put me back into the realm of being relevant as a basketball player. We finally land in China. I'm welcomed by about 5,000 people. For a person who is depressed to be able to be greeted the way how I was greeted, it was just amazing. After playing three years for Shanji and Fo Shan, Marbury finally reached a goal he couldn't achieve in the NBA. He became a champion, leading the Beijing Ducks to their first ever CBA title. <laughs> Man, when we won, I mean, it's like rock stars on steroids, man. It was amazing. I was so happy for the Chinese players because this is their country. This is where they're from. I couldn't control my emotions and my feeling. I just started praying to God because it was a, um, it was a really challenging year. And it was like everything that happened, it just kind of like you wasted. The Houston Rockets tried to get me to come back in 2012, but I don't think the Beijing fans would have wanted me to leave. And after we won the championship and after they built the statue of me, it didn't make sense. Marbury stardom rose as the Ducks won back-to-back -back titles in 2014 and 15. They said I was old. They said I can't play no more. The critics said I can't do it no more. The people who have done so much for me as far as helping me rebuild my spirit and my soul and allowing me to be able to move forward in a life. It's not just about basketball. This is home for me. My museum is about five kilometers away from Tenement Square. Us winning three championships, they wanted to honor me from doing that in this city. This is the third championship right here. The goal was to build a dynasty in Beijing. I mean, of course, a lot of people thought I was nuts for saying that, but it was something that I, I thought was possible in doing. This is the, the famous slam. This is uh, the Dapper Dandy Award okay. from Dick Vitale. Man, some of this stuff, I can't believe my mother kept it. The McDonald's All-American. Wow. Look at the team. Look how many pros. Sharif Abdul-Rahim, Vince, Vince Carter. Carter, Kevin Garnett, Antoine okay. Jameson, wow. Paul Pierce. That's a pretty good team. <laughs> yeah. Mom. Check this out. Yeah, they slicing my man up right now. So I'm gonna teach you something. You ready? <laughs> if I had what? This is the Louisiana in me. You ready? Oh my. <coughs> oh my, you went right to it. It's spicy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it is spicy. With athletes like Marbury increasing the popularity of basketball in China, the NBA chose Beijing as the 2016 Global Games host. I do miss playing basketball in the NBA. I don't miss the politics of the NBA, but I miss being able to dance on the court against the best players. But I feel like what is being done now has more meaning for the game globally. What's up, man? What's up, man? It's so good to see you, man. Just hanging. Look at you. How are you doing, man? I'm well. You look great. You look really good. I'm doing well. How's your team this year? We're going to be good. We're going to be good. We got a good team. So you got three championships, huh? 
and the trophy and outside. Sta and a statue. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing like winning the championship, boy. That's I great. tell you. I appreciate yeah. you coming. Say hi, Thank man. You. For real. Definitely. Come when you're in New York. Come by the office. I will. Step by Barber, baby. This is what he's doing over here, man. The time, Beijing, man. man. That's, that's he love. He did what he had to do. That's love. <laughs> I'm 39. My contract is up next year. I'm just taking it one day at a time. But when it's time for me to stop, I'll be fine with stopping. I've accomplished a lot in playing basketball. If there was no China, are you alive today? I don't know. I really don't know. I really don't know, to be honest. But I'm happy we don't really deal in the if. So it's one thing to have a statue. It's another thing to be American as a statue in, in Beijing. I'm just deeply humbled by them even thinking to be able to put something like this up. A kid from Coney Island got this, man. I say it all the time. Kid from the ghetto. Kid that rose from concrete. You know, when I left the NBA and then I came here to play basketball. I had no idea that this was something that would be possible.